this is a real problem that you might actually encounter at some point. So we're going to do it and it's going to be great. So here I have an LED. This is a, a, a this is a, a yellow LED, and I just have it on a little little battery right here. There we go. And so you can do that. Okay. Now an LED makes light. I'll put it over here. An LED makes light uh, because it's a diode and it's it's more complicated than a normal incandescent bulb. But they're very cool. Uh, however different colors require different voltages and different manufacturers have different maximum currents so you can't just hook it up to a battery and go yeah let's go because if it doesn't have enough voltage it's not going to turn on if it has too much current gone okay so it has to be just right so this particular bulb in this case i have a blue led this is our symbol for an led that's actually the symbol for a diode but it is a diode um, and i have a resistor r and I want to hook it up to a 9 volt battery. So this blue LED requires 3.2 volts. So I couldn't I couldn't run it on a D cell battery, right? This is 1.5 volts. Even two D cell batteries would be 3 volts, so that wouldn't work either. A 9 volt battery I could, but I'm going to need to put a resistor in there to limit the current. I don't want to have more than 20 milliamps. So what value of the resistor would we have? Let's just call this EMF. Let's do this generic. And that's R. And this is going to be uh, v L the voltage across the LED so now I can still use the loop rule so the loop rule says the change in voltage around a loop is equal to zero if I go around this way I'm gonna get a voltage drop of uh, EMF it's a positive and then I have a current coming this way so the voltage drop across across this is going to be uh, I R and then I have the voltage drop across the LED which is going to be minus VL, and I want that to be equal to zero. So now I just need to solve for the value of R. Let's just solve this generically. So I'm going to add those two things to the other side, or I'm going to add IR to the other side. IR equals EMF minus VL. So R is going to be EMF minus VL over I, and that's I max. So let's calculate the value of that resistor that we can put in there. I have a 9 volts, I have 3.2 over 20 times 10 to the negative 3 because it's 20 milliamps. Okay, so let's put that in the calculator. So 9, 3.2 minus uh, 20 times 10 to the negative 3 divided by, and I get 290 ohms. So that's what resistor I'd put in series with my 9 volt battery so that my LED would work. Now, yeah, you do lose energy because the you lose power over that resistor, but still, it won't break. Okay, next question. Imagine that I have two blue LEDs in parallel, like that. Then what resistor would I need? Would I need a greater resistor? Would I need a smaller resistor? What would I need? Um, it's not too difficult a problem, but it's, it's important to, to visualize what's going on. I still have this current I passing through that resistor, and here I have I1, and here I have I1, right? They both have the same current, they're both the same LEDs. So the total current I is going to be the sum of these two. So in, in essentially, I max is just going to be twice as much. This is going to be 40 times 10 to the negative 3. So I'm going to have uh, half the, the resistance needed, so it'd be 145. Is that right? 145. So I need a smaller resistor because now I have two LEDs in parallel, and the combination is going to have a larger current draw than just one by itself, so I don't need as large a resistance right there. Now, you could think to yourself, what if I put the two? Uh, LEDs in series, what would happen? I'm not going to answer that question. I'm going to let you answer that question. It's a good question to think about, though.